Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. This time around, I want to talk about how some of the new and improved features of the Z9 have helped me in the field. Now, I was originally planning on a full Z9 review, but the truth is, I've just been too busy shooting the Z9 and writing a setup guide for the Z9 to get to the review. Since it's been nearly a year since the camera was announced, I thought instead that I talk about how I'm using the various new or enhanced features of the camera in the field. Things like the fast frame rate, subject detection, blackout free viewfinder, you know, those sort of things. I figured maybe talking about practical application might be a better use of your time than watching me rehash all the specs you already know. So let's get started and keep in mind these aren't in any particular order. Frame rate. First on our list is that Formula One level frame rate. I shoot raw, so I have mine set to 20 frames a second and I leave it there all the time. For action, the benefits are obvious and 20 frames per second really increases the number of amazing shots you have to choose from in a sequence. This has proven especially handy for bird and flight shots where you want to show the absolute peak moment, like this Osprey with his talons out just as he was about to grab some nesting material. It's not that a slower frame rate wouldn't have gotten a similar shot, it's that 20 frames per second allowed me to choose the absolute best shot from three or four good options. A slower frame rate may have netted me just one shot that was good and maybe none that were great. I also leave the camera pegged at 20 frames per second, even for more static subjects. I find that it sometimes allows me to catch just the right expression or look. Take this baby sea turtle. He wasn't very fast, but 20 frames per second allowed me to capture his little flipper at just the right instant to make it look like he was waving. The thing is, even with the turtle, I had a good shot on either side of that one that would have been okay to use. However, this was just a little bit better. In short, high frame rates don't just help you get more keepers, they help you get better quality keepers. Now, I know the argument is that this field workflow creates too many shots to sort through, but you know what, that always strikes me as a bit funny. That's basically arguing that you're happy missing out on peak moments in exchange for easier sorting later on. In my opinion, if you're not trying to get the best possible shot in every situation, why are you even there? The key is to change your sorting and culling methods. You don't have to look at every shot under a microscope. Look at the overall series and just check out the ones that look interesting. Flip screen. Okay, I really love the flip screen on the Z9 and I love that it works in both horizontal and vertical orientation. Of course, flip screens aren't new, but the Z9 is the first Nikon to let you use a professional level AF system with one. DSLRs mostly used slower contrast detection AF and the PD AF systems of the previous Z series cameras simply didn't have the same kind of autofocus horsepower as the Z9 does. The combination of top tier AF and a flip screen allows me to use the Z9 in ways I've never used a Nikon before. I can get low and shoot action like this reddish egret as it danced around. In fact, I just posted a video covering how I did it if you want more details on this shot. I also use the flip screen vertically for this burrowing owl. Now I could have lied on my belly, but the little red ants all over the area kind of convinced me otherwise. The flip screen came to my rescue. I use it with the auto AF area and even in profile, the Z9 locked right onto the eye. The bottom of the lens was just in the grass, so you get sort of a piling up effect in the foreground, helping the little owl to really stand out. I've also used the flip screen to lean over the sides of boats. I basically flip the screen out, lower the camera to the water surface as I kneel on the floor of the boat, and then I knock out low level shots like you see here with this hippo. Just be careful not to scoop water up with the lens hood and don't ask me how I know. The truth is, this little flip screen has really been a revolution for me, and I find new ways to use it all the time. I'm glad Nikon included it. Shutter Shield. Another feature I've been very happy to have on the Z9 is the Shutter Shield. As you know, the Z9 doesn't have a mechanical shutter. However, it does include a shutter shield that helps protect the sensor from dust and damage. It's far more robust than just a normal shutter curtain, and it was one of the first things I turned on when I set up my Z9. The shield has really helped minimize dust problems when I'm forced to change the lenses in you know, windy, dusty conditions. It also provides better protection for the sensor than a typical mechanical shutter, and I'm much less nervous about accidentally brushing up against it when the lens is off. Keep in mind though, it only activates when you turn the camera off, so make sure you do so before you swap glass. Startup time. Okay, this isn't a feature where I have like a specific use to describe to you, other than to say, I'm just so impressed at how quickly the Z9 starts up from a powered off state. One quick flip of the switch and it's ready to go. It's the fastest starting mirrorless camera I've ever used. It doesn't seem like much, 
But I tell you what, I have missed some surprise moments while waiting for other mirrorless cameras to boot up. So kudos to Nikon for that one. USB charging. Another feature I really like about the Z9 is that it allows USB charging. If you have two batteries, that means you can plug one into the normal Nikon charger and then plug a USB-C cable into the camera to charge the battery in there. All you need is a PD, power delivery, rated USB charger, and most are. With this option, there's no need to buy another expensive charger, and if your main charger is lost or broken, you're not dead in the water. Files and noise. Overall, I find the file quality from the Z9 is very reminiscent of what we saw with the D850 and Z7 series files. They have good color and the RAW files are easy to push around in Lightroom. I've also been playing with the high efficiency RAW files, now fully supported by Lightroom, and I have to say, I'm impressed. Although I'm just paranoid enough to keep using lossless compression for most of my work, the high efficiency star files have really proven themselves pretty good in post. I find them handy when I need a deeper buffer or when I'm a little short on card space. That said, I've not yet done any like side-by-side -side critical tests with them to determine where I might find a difference, but so far for my normal shooting, the high efficiency files seem indistinguishable from my normal lossless compressed RAWs. Also, as for ISO, I tend to favor ISO 1600 or less with the Z9. However, I'll still go to 3200 if I need it. Although I try to avoid getting much higher than that, I'll move upwards of ISO 6400 if I'm filling the frame pretty well and won't need to crop too much or at all. I'll even flirt with ISO 12800 if push really comes to shove, but it all depends on how well I'm filling the frame and how fine the detail is on the subject I'm trying to capture. After all, there's a big difference in fine detail between a crocodile and a sparrow and how easily you can clean those files up with noise reduction software. Before we continue though, I wanted to mention that I've just published a new book, The Ultimate Nikon Z9 Setup and Shooting Guide for Wildlife Photography. The book covers how I set up each of my menus for wildlife work, why I set them the way I do, and how I leverage those settings in the field. If you feel like you're not getting the most from your Z9 setup, or if you find yourself a little overwhelmed with all those menus, this book will come to the rescue with easy to understand language and tons of examples. Check it out, it's a must have for every Z9 shooter. I'll put a link for it in the card above and in the description area for this video. Focus shift shooting. Okay, I know this isn't for everyone, so I'll keep it brief, but part of what I do with wildlife photography involves wildlife macros, things like frogs, lizards, and snakes. One really noticeable improvement with the Z9 is how quickly focus shift shooting works on this camera. With a stacked wildlife macro shot, you gotta be quick or the animal's gonna move before you're done. The Z9 can really knock out a stack of images in no time. This makes successful stacks with ANSI subjects, like this one, far more likely to happen than with other slower cameras like the Z6, Z7 II, or the D850. Panning. I think the Z9 is my favorite slow shutter speed panning camera. When the shutter speeds are between like 1 8th of a second and 1 60th of a second, I think it does slightly better than even the Sony A1 for slow shutter speed panning work. The blackout free experience coupled with the smooth, consistent viewfinder feed really makes slow shutter speed pan so much better than in the past. I've also set the EVF frame rate to a virtually lag free 120 frames per second, but I gotta tell you, even at 60 frames a second, it was decent. And of course, it works equally well for fast shutter speed panning, although at faster shutter speeds, I don't think it holds an advantage over the A1 anymore. Autofocus and subject detection. Overall, the AF system in the Z9 has worked out really well, especially after firmware 2.1. It generally hangs onto my targets very well and is extremely accurate. I also really like the new subject detection system. While previous Z cameras included subject detection, the Z9 really brought it up to speed. Subject detection works in the auto, 3D, and wide AF areas and has proven very helpful in my wildlife work. In fact, I often use subject detection in conjunction with 3D AF so that I can lock onto my subject's face or eye and then just adjust the composition any way I like without the need to constantly move my AF point. Once 3D is locked on, I simply adjust my composition to my liking and the camera keeps the AF area on the eye. Of course, subject detection isn't always able to recognize our subject, but you can sometimes still use 3D in those cases. It really depends on the eye and face. 3D AF is very reliant on colors, so if the eye is noticeably different than the fur or feathers of an animal, and the eye is taking up enough of the frame, of course, you can often use 3D without subject detection, and it'll still cling to the eye. However, if everything is the same color, 3D AF does tend to wander around a little bit. I also like the wide AF areas and have used them quite a bit for my bird and flight work. They seem to grab on more tenaciously than other AF areas in that situation. I'll use them both with and without subject detection, depending on how well subject detection is working. 
I found subject detection works better with more classical looking birds and not so well with like long neck birds or kind of odd looking specimens. I also like to use the wide AF area in conjunction with 3D sometimes. The thing is, I prefer to track with 3D so I can compose on the fly any way I like and not have to worry about where the AF area is in the viewfinder. However, 3D is a little bit small to lock onto a bird that's like already in flight. So what I do is I use the wide AF area to initially get on the bird because it's larger, and then I press my FN1 button, which I've programmed for 3D, to take over. Also, I typically do this with subject detection enabled and only press FN1 if I see subject detection has locked onto the face or the eye of the bird. Otherwise, I tend to keep it in the wide AF area for the duration. I also like the C1 and C2 AF areas. Now those are the wide AF areas that allow you to customize them to the sizes you want. I often use one of them as a long horizontal line to catch animals that are maybe just above grass or when the animals are sort of skimming over the water and I don't want the camera focusing in the wrong spot, like on the water instead of the bird. I also have one of my customizable AF areas set to just one by one. It's like single point, but it has subject detection too. This allows me to initially place my AF area on the eye and as long as subject detection is working and that AF area is you know, in the vicinity of the eye, it'll stick to the eye as the animal moves or looks around. It's handy when you don't want to chase the eye all the time, but you need to start with more precise AF placement. I can also disable subject detection and use that one by one area just like a single AF point if I want. And I'm often turning subject detection on and off as I shoot depending on how the animal is facing me and what it's looking like. Finally, I also use auto AF with subject detection, mostly in conjunction with the flip screen when I'm shooting low. By the way, getting the most out of subject detection requires a little background, so I'll give you a few tricks and tips I've picked up along the way. First, it helps if the subject is in focus enough to be at least recognizable in the frame. If it's not, subject detection can't see it and the camera will use the AF area normally. Now, depending on the AF area, this might lead the camera into locking onto the wrong thing. So I generally pre-focus at about the same range as the target. I've also found it helps if you have a good exposure for the subject. Overly dark or bright subjects can make it tough for subject detection to catch on, so proper exposure is important for the best results. Second, subject detection isn't always reliable. When this happens, sometimes it'll go for the wrong area on your target, like maybe the body instead of the face or the eye, and sometimes it'll even go for like an ear or a spot on the animal. If you find it's not consistently sticking where you want it on that animal, it's best to just shut it off. I have my recall shooting functions hold option set to disable subject detection and it's programmed to my lens function button. That way, if I find subject detection isn't working well, I can quickly shut it off and keep shooting my AF area normally. In fact, that's a big reason why I have my C2 AF area set for that one by one size. I can use it with subject detection or as a small single point depending on what's happening in the viewfinder. The thing is, how well subject detection works can vary widely based on the position of the animal's face. So having a quick way to turn subject detection on and off is very handy. As a side note, hopefully Nikon will add a dedicated option for this down the road so we don't have to burn our only recall shooting function on it. Third, I think setting this to animal rather than auto works better for most wildlife targets. Overall, I think the AF system in the Z9 is the best I've ever used in any Nikon and within spitting distance of the Sony A1. In fact, about the only place I think the A1 has an edge is for bird and flight work, especially smaller, faster birds. Although, don't get me wrong here, the Z9 can do small, fast birds too. It's just that my keeper rate in that scenario with the A1 is a touch higher. So there you have it, a little about how I'm using the newer features of the Z9 in the field. Overall, I've been very pleased with the Z9 and can wholeheartedly recommend it for wildlife work. In my opinion, it's the best Nikon I've ever used for wildlife. Not only is it feature rich, it's built like its mama was a sledgehammer and I have certainly put my Z9 to the test in snow, rain, dust, dirt, mud, you name it. Again, remember to take a peek at that Z9 setup guide I mentioned earlier. If you want to get the most from your Z9 setup, or even just see how I have mine set up, that book's going to help you out. In fact, that book has already helped out a ton of people, so I hope you'll check it out. Also, remember to head to the site and sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss a video, an article, or an announcement. And as always, I'd love it if you'd like, subscribe, and get notified. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.